Every day without fail, the officers attached to the newest regiment of the Kenya Army gather at this field at the Embakasi barracks. They take their charges through their daily training routines. It is a task they have been performing for slightly over one year. The dogs and the handlers work together, each knows what is required of the other. It is this understanding that has made this a formidable addition to the army, especially in combat times. But it wasn't always like this. For a long time, the military dogs were confined to security duties within the barracks. Until this lady, Major Dr. Marion Amulioto, joined the army. I got into the army when there was another vet before me. So I had to chart my way forward. I had to come up with my job description. I had to come up with the work that I was supposed to do. A trained veterinary doctor, Major Marion quickly set about the task of establishing the canine unit in line with international standards. The dogs would now be required to move outside the barracks and into actual combat situations. Um, a war dog is a dog that supports military work, a dog that will go out and, and support the soldier in the field as they do their work. So they are much more than the normal guard dogs that you'd have because the dog will actually um, enable the soldier to meet his targets. For example, you have the tracker dogs, where when the soldiers go out for their work and they need to pass through bushes or places where you know you can have an ambush, the dog is able to indicate to the soldier. The dogs under her care have been helpful in operations carried out by the army in the recent past and have been particularly key in Operation Linda Nchi in Somalia and the search and rescue in the aftermath of the Westgate terror attack. Sit. Sit. Good dog. Each of the dogs of war have a service number and are treated any other member of the defense forces. So the same way a soldier when they're joining the army, they would first of all start with the basic training where they learn the basic uh, soldiering uh, uh, skills like obedience and all that. The dogs have, should be able to do that before now they get into advanced training where they're able now to, to do the, to, to, to specialize in their skills. So we are looking for a dog that is um, easy to train, a dog that is physically fit and gun steady. Yes. Being a veterinary doctor isn't what Marion intended to do, but she has grown into the job and these canines have indeed become her best friends so much that their health or lack of, which is rare, greatly affects her. My lowest moments are when I lose the dogs, oh, because each dog is valuable to us. You find that almost every dog is attached to a certain soldier. And before you bring up that dog to socialize it, to bond with that soldier and they start working as a team, it takes a very long time. So losing any of those dogs really, yeah, it affects us. Her exploits in this area, taking care of the animals that cost an arm and a leg, have earned her rare praise from her superiors, who have now integrated her charges into the core operations of the army. And it is in her regiment that the number of female officers is almost at par with the male officers. And it is her hope that as the regiment grows and expands, so will the number of female officers working in the unit to help reduce the gap between male and female officers. Brenda Wanga, NTV, Nairobi.